Thanksgiving is a couple of weeks away, but what does it look like during the coronavirus pandemic? In today's To Your Wellbeing, we take a look at how you can still celebrate and stay safe. With us today, Cone Health's Infection Prevention Medical Director, Dr. Cynthia Snyder, is joining us. So first and foremost, we want to say what is recommended? Is it a small intimate gathering with only people you live with? Can you possibly invite other people, some friends, coworkers, family members? Well, it's a, it, it really depends on how much risk somebody is willing to take. I think the lowest risk that people can do is really celebrating with those that you live with. And that if you are wanting to still share that, you know, the, the celebration with your f extended family members to consider doing it virtually. I think one thing that as to our favor is that it's still relatively warm, you know, for this time of year. And so the to celebrate outdoors um, and still having um, maybe a few more family members over and stay at least uh, six feet away or having smaller tables, but outdoors, I think that pro provides um, a, like less risk than having an intimate dinner with um, other family members in a house that's maybe not as well ventilated. All right, so if you do plan to see older relatives or people that you don't live with during the Thanksgiving holiday, what do the experts recommend uh, doing beforehand? Do we need to quarantine? In a, in a perfect world, I would say yes. I would say definitely quarantine and even consider getting tested, you know, three to four days before the event. Um, by um, quarantine, you're reducing your risk that you're introducing to your um, family members that may be more vulnerable to COVID-19. And also that's to think of that, it's still very important to be wearing a mask, especially if you are within six feet of somebody or if you're going to be in a, in a place that's not well ventilated. I believe you can take some some uh, changes in the house, you know, by keeping your windows open, possibly your doors, depending on what the weather is like. You really want to increase, you know, air circulation and ventilation in where you're having um, your celebration. And then and then really um, minimizing the time people are within six feet of each other, not wearing masks. Um, so spacing out at least six feet, if you could, by uh, spacing out like where people will be eating and then also, you know, families that are having a college student coming home, I think would be very important for them to get tested before getting home. Okay, now, should you plan to quarantine for 14 days after Thanksgiving if you were with people outside your kind of safe bubble or you traveled somewhere? Uh, yeah, so, you know, all these things can be very risky, right? We mentioned um, having a, a Thanksgiving dinner with family members that are not inside your bubble, you know, from different households. And then especially if somebody's coming from an area that has a higher rate of COVID in their community, they're potentially bringing it over, you know? And I think the, the bigger your celebration, the more chances that you're gonna encounter somebody that has a COVID-19. I think the, the, the part that's really difficult is that when somebody develops COVID-19, they can they can be um, either mildly symptomatic or have no symptoms and yet still transmit virus to somebody else. So by the time somebody develops symptoms, they may have already had Thanksgiving dinner with you and have exposed everybody. So if somebody's meeting, like having a, a gathering with folks that they don't live with, um, you know, quarantining afterwards um, could also make sense. So if you are gathering with people that you don't live with and you're going to eat the Thanksgiving meal, all right, so what should that look like? Different serving utensils and things of that nature. I know the spacing apart already, but how well should it look? I would say I would designate one person to be delegating, uh, putting all the portions out. You really want to minimize um, kind of that potluck style that many people, people are used to for Thanksgiving. And it's best served that the one person kind of 
portions all the plates and then also does you know making sure you have um hand hygiene station people are are um sanitizing their hands before and after they touch any other utensils and um and then also when it comes to beverages especially if you are having more alcoholic beverages it can decrease your awareness of you know your use of wearing a mask or talking you know becoming a close talker or you know uh, maybe singing or yelling or so and we know the, uh, like having um more excitable like like singing or yelling and those those types of um activities can spread more um COVID-19 and SARS-CoV um, virus in, into the air so we unfortunately want to make sure that you are just aware of those, those scenarios so spacing out is important when you're having sharing a meal um, outdoors preferably or a, very, a well ventilated area um, have would have one person doling out the meals and then um, you know like having obviously um, wine or any other beverage can be fine, but as long as it's not done to excess. Mm -hmm. So what if someone at the gathering just doesn't quite agree with needing to wear a mask or stand six feet away? So that is the challenge, right? Probably mm -hmm. like politics, like not everybody in the same family believes in the same school of thought. And that is a very big risk that we're taking. If you have somebody that doesn't really believe in masking where and they're just uh, going about their daily business, there's a good chance that they could uh, contract uh, COVID-19 from the community and then kind of import it to your to your Thanksgiving party. And if that's the case, I think it's best to discuss um, ahead of time the expectations of the dinner that you're having and that celebration that you know you you want to keep everybody as safe as possible and then if somebody's decide feels that they're not comfortable following those recommendations and masking to, you know to protect everybody then maybe consider saying let's do it next year when it may be safer all right. Dr. Snyder is going to be with us until six o'clock. She's going to be answering your coronavirus questions when we come back from the break. So you can text us your questions 336-379-5775. We'll be right back.